2022 has been an amazing experience in my filmmaking journey, and today we're going to talk about some of the most valuable pieces of gear that I have in my kit. These are things that just make my filmmaking life easier, a couple of things that I've been hiding for you, and a few things that clients might enjoy. What's going on, guys? Long time no see. As you can see, things are a little bit different here, but your boy remains the same. First and foremost, I wanna thank you guys so much for helping me hit 20,000 subscribers. We're gonna go and keep pushing for the next milestone. So always, always really do appreciate each and every subscription. It really does help the channel out a lot. But today we're gonna talk about some things that's really genuinely helped me out a lot in the field. These are things that are in my kit that are actually impactful and they actually are things that help me make more money. It's things I can't live without and things I actually can't film without in a way. So stick around with me. These are gonna be like a bunch of little mini reviews packed into one video because we have a lot to cover. Okay, so first up, something I use literally every single shoot, my light. Now, I have gone the full route of having a lot of different key lights. Like I started off with a 60 watt light. It was like 89 bucks. Then I moved up to a SL200W. Then I went for this thing. This is the, Jesus Christ this is huge. This is the GVM 300, the 300 watt light. This thing gets absolutely massive. It's clunky. It actually doesn't like stay up when you when you're actually using it on set it's kind of a nightmare to use but now <laughs> i have a new toy already off rip much better packaging let me show you the packaging on the other one the other light had this like kind of crappy bag packaging which clients do not like the look of and it's me i'm clients but this one is incredible. Let me show you something. This bad boy is the Small Rig RC450D. This is a 450 watt light. This thing is much more compact than this bad boy because the power supply is separate. I get to hang the power supply off my C-stand. It makes my life a little bit easier and it makes dealing with a light so much better. So what I was looking for in a light was something that was like a thousand dollars or less but i really wanted something that was truly high powered and the great thing about this is it's got like this slide on hot shoe thing going to where you can disassemble it and put it together in its case it's really really neat the build quality is much 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 better than anything i've ever used and truthfully when it comes to using something for the money this is something I use literally every shoot. This is my key light, something that I need to often overpower the sun and nothing I've owned could even come close to that. This just gets me one step closer because I need to be able to control light in any situation that I'm in, especially with doing these story videos or interviews or just any scenario whatsoever. I get to put this thing on like 30% now and it is so bright. The great thing about the light is, of course, it has controls on the back, but it also has a separate remote. If I want to be sitting down, watching a monitor, anything like that, I can adjust the settings of my light remotely, which is kind of great. And instead of having to do this thing I always do that Dean tells me not to do, I get up, I turn my light, I walk back to my screen, and I get back up and I try my light. And it's just a, <laughs> it's just a lot and I'm stubborn. But 10 out of 10 would recommend the small rig series. It seems like they're coming for Aperture in a way, providing these lights that are of similar performance, but at a better price point. And I'm always here for a better price point. Next up, this is something that I bet you didn't see coming. And I say that with a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> I bought a new camera. Yay. <laughs> this looks just like my old camera, but this is the FX30. I absolutely adore this camera. It is pretty much an FX3, but crop sensor. Everything is almost identical on this thing. It uh has the same body, has takes the same lenses, takes the same top handle. I bought it because I needed a dedicated behind the scenes camera. And that is what is number two on my list. It's not the FX30 particularly, but What's helped me a lot this year is having 
something dedicated for behind the scenes, for progress, for just the process in general, because I haven't been able to capture that. And the whole point of this YouTube channel is to kind of show you guys what life is like in those moments. And I've done a crap job at that, but this camera helps me do so much more. There will be a full review on this thing coming out soon where I can do some comparisons. So if you guys want me to compare it to the FX3, to the Ronin 4D, to the Blackmagic, anything that you can think of, let me know. I'll go out and do it because so far, the image that this thing produces compared with a few accessories that I have for it has been just spicy. Okay, next I have something huge. Uh, it's probably a little over the top, hold on. Cut that, make sure you cut that. Okay, all right, hear me out, hear me out. This giant case, as you can see, it has a lot of scuff marks because I use this thing a lot. In this massive case is a 21.5 inch director's monitor. OC makes this and I'm gonna get into it because bro, I use this so often. I have always had clients over my shoulders or craning their necks trying to look into my camera monitor on camera or you know a little too close to me. So what I do now is I run a wireless transmitter out to a director's monitor. Best thing ever. So let me show you. Okay, so this may be a little trippy, but I am on set on one of our current shoots and what we're doing is we're using this huge director's monitor. Now, of course, it will not be in frame like this one is, but this is a very tiny room and me and Dean are actually sitting outside while our talent, any viewer, are actually sitting in here and that way it doesn't feel too crowded and they can still get really nice answers and we can be remote. Now, all I have is this giant monitor hooked up to a wireless transmitter to wirelessly transmit the image. And yeah, that way I can just be outside, kind of be removed, still have a nice frame, still monitor, make sure they're not like getting out of focus or anything because we are using the Vespit Prime Cine lenses. And yeah, this thing is just kind of awesome. This is the OC 21.5 inch. This thing is incredible. I use it a lot of times for interviews, for people to see how they look, for my clients to see. It's really versatile because it takes a V-mount battery on the back. And that just wins it for me because you could technically buy a computer monitor. I'm using the computer monitor right here to do the things that this thing does, but it doesn't have the focus peaking. It doesn't have the false color, the camera tools that a actual camera monitor will have. Also, this thing has SDI, this thing has HDMI, headphone jacks, just a little bit of everything. As I said, it also runs off V-mount. This has been something that, though it is not a necessity in any regard when it comes to filming, it's just not. This has been something my clients like, like a lot. They often ask for this at this point. I showed up to a shoot with this as a solution and they genuinely did enjoy it because this is not for me. It's just not. This is for the client. It helps me and it helps me do things on set better. But when it comes down to it, this is one of those client experience type buys. And I absolutely do love this one. I could definitely recommend it. I've actually traveled with this thing. I uh, brought my laptop as one computer setup, and then I brought my Mac Studio and just this monitor, and that was a perfectly fine second computer setup. It works so well through and through, and I've been very happy with it, especially with the case. Bringing that extra case out just feels, you know, a little bit over the top, and I love being over the top. Also, this case is so separately. I will link this in the description because this is the only case that fits this monitor. <laughs> so if you are looking to, you know, get your hands on something like this, I will leave this one linked in the description also. Okay, next up, I'm already regretting this. I have another giant case of things. Let me get that. This. <laughs> I feel like I'm pulling out a lot of new toys for you guys and this is kind of awesome. This is the DZO Cine lens set. I switched from the DZO Kata zoom lenses that I had because it was two zooms and they were great, beautiful lenses, but 
I don't like zoom lenses. And so what I have done is I bought a set of prime lenses. This is my set of cinema primes that I'm currently using. These are probably some of the best lenses you can get for the money. And in fact, I got seven lenses for about 6,500 bucks when they retail for about 8,900 bucks. Those numbers could be way off. I can actually put the real numbers on screen. But the great thing about that is I got the case and we have uniform cine lenses across the board for a unified look. And of course I use two FX3s right now, pairing in the FX30 if I want to do a third interview angle. These things just help me out a lot. It helps with that consistency. It helps with just the niceness. They have such a creamy, chill look to them. And I really, really do like that. They're not insanely clinically sharp and pulling focus on these have been a lot better. And you may be thinking, why should I get cine lenses? Is it just because they look good? Is it because they, you know, work better? Eh, it's a little bit of everything at this point. This is something that is also client appeal, of course, having my camera built out with cine lenses and you know, the direct the monitor, there's, there's something to that. But when it comes to actual usability of these lenses, I genuinely do love the look that they give me with my interview setups. Sometimes I still find myself using my photo lenses because there are smaller projects that are just kind of cheaper things that I just kind of have to be convenient with. But for the most part, I love these lenses. They actually are pretty, pretty good for the price of it. I have yet to really experience like really high end glass. I say really high end like budget high-end glass, about $3,000 a lens. But everything I've looked at online, we're getting down to such specifics that my clients do not care about yet. I will get to the point where these lenses will be, you know, too little for what I need them for. But for right now, absolutely excellent, excellent set of cine lenses. And I really wanted something I can get a full set of. That way I'm not missing out and I can completely get rid of my photo glass because your boy has a full set of cine lenses and it just works. Now we can talk about something a little smaller than a giant set of lenses. These are the DJI, oh God, what are you called? It's just the DJI mic? They didn't want to do mini mic pro three or anything? Okay, this is the DJI mic lab set, absolutely love this thing. So fun fact, before we get too deep into this, I've had the Sennheiser, like the $650 Sennheiser set for like two, three years at this point. And I made a mistake. I always kind of thought they were overrated for just a little bit because they would always hiss and have terrible noise and lose connection. And I even got a second pair and it did the exact same thing. And I slowly began to realize, obviously now looking back on it, that it was the, um, the actual lavalier microphone that they send you with the Sennheiser is terrible. And so I'm gonna say lav mics because getting these, the convenience of having these has kind of opened my eyes up to the world of lav mics. And if you are interested in buying something like the Sennheiser or these, you really need a good quality lapel. I'm actually looking into getting the Countryman's B6 or the B3s. Those are something that is such crystal clear audio that it kind of opened my eyes to the world of lapel mics because I never knew how people got that sound before. But for convenience, bro, having these things just pair right out of the box, take it out, and it even has a little like magnet on it. So I can just put this, boom. And I now have audio that I'm able to record right from my DJI mic. This thing is gonna be super helpful for outdoor YouTube stuff. I've already done a lot of behind the scenes things using this because I'm all about convenience and I just does not get more convenient than this mic set. So yeah, so far my favorite mic set of the year. Uh, debated on buying it for a long time. Don't even know why I did because it is so worth it. Speaking of mic sets, the single thing that gets the most attention from my clients for some reason is this blimp. I bought this blimp when I got my microphone set a while back and people don't understand this thing, but for some reason this just raises my production quality to clients. And I absolutely love that because it's just to isolate the wind. 
You know, you use it indoors, you can use it outdoors, but it just creates a pocket of air for your microphone. It does help with audio to some degree, but um, it's really helpful with the giant dead cat cover. I use this thing all the time. It completely kills the wind, which I love. But yeah, this is just my microphone holder and this gets the most attention. And I wanna recommend getting you a professional microphone stand and of course a blimp. Ah, man, this is like the straight vanity purchase if I ever had to have one, but I am so happy I did because yes, it is extremely useful, but out of any camera that I have, out of any monitor lenses, this single thing gets talked about the most and it's something I've just been noticing. I would like to talk about honorable mentions. These are things that are alternatives to things I've suggested in the past that I've kind of seen. I don't currently use either, but the first one is the small rig mat box. I have talked a lot about the Polar Pro mat box system and a lot of you have come to me and asked for any kind of alternative and I've recommended a couple, but I mainly use the Polar Pro system. This is the small rig mat box. If you have a set of drop in filters, which I do not have, these are the, I believe they're four by fours. This is an excellent, excellent choice for that because solid build and it's just a glass drop in filter. And for those of you who need something that is a cheaper alternative that has glass drop in, you can definitely check out the small rig mat box. As I said, I personally do not use this one because I have my full Polar Pro kit. And so I'm debating on keeping this or giving this kit away. I will definitely look into that in the future. My second honorable mention goes out to, this thing is so freaking dope. This is the Polar Pro Pivot. This is a shoulder mount. I made a video a while back that put together a contraption of a shoulder mount and it was great. And for those of you who do the running gun life, this is definitely the way to go when it comes to that because it's collapsible. And as you can see here, it just pivots out. So this thing just genuinely over the shoulder um, doesn't get much simpler than this. Ah! I absolutely, I absolutely love this thing. I haven't done much shoulder rig shooting this year as I wanted to. I did a lot last year. But this year I did get my hands on the DJI Ronin 4D and that has genuinely helped out with most scenarios that require something like this. But every now and then I get to bust out the pivot and yeah, this one is just best looks, best functionality and the most solid kit put together. But it is an honorable mention. All right, unless I'm missing something, which I feel like I am, but I don't want this video to be too much of me just rambling. That is going to be it. That is the gear and stuff that I've used throughout this year that I found to be individually impactful to my life and to my clients. Things that help me out are of course, behind the scenes cameras, brand new lenses, new monitors, new lights. Those things are, they have such a hand on everything that I do that switching those things out genuinely do help me. If you found anything in this video helpful, please let me know in the comments. If you have stuff that you would like to suggest, let me know down in the comment section because I am sure I've missed a few things, but I will get to those things soon. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm gonna bringing you more content just like this every week. So you guys stay safe, you're loved, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Also, this is my house. I bought a house in case anyone was wondering what this new backdrop is and you stay to the end of the video. Uh, yeah, welcome to quote unquote season two of the Chris Franklin channel because I'm gonna try to ramp this stuff up. Coming soon.